And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Age of Towers, or as I call it, Age of Dice Towers. Not really, but I like the, obviously I like the, the tower motif, but this is a tower defense game. You ever play a tower defense game? I like playing them. Build your towers, bad guys come in, you blow them apart until they're too powerful, then they eventually take you out. Or if a big giant boss comes, then you gotta take him out. They're a lot of fun. Does this game do a good job at bringing that to life? It's done by Devil Pig. They've done some pretty good stuff in the past. Let's take a look. Each player is going to get their own board that they have here that you're going to put. This is the board that the bad guys are going to be moving down the path on. You'll put your castle at the end of it, and you'll put a stack of monsters here. Uh, it's kind of randomized, but you have a boss that's two from the bottom. You also have your own stack of road tiles that you'll have here in front of you. You'll have your action board that you will have. This will keep track of your life for when the enemies attack you, so it starts at 15. So there are three you know four different players involved in the game and each one has their own board these boards are functionally identical they just have different types of terrain in the background so the first thing that will happen every turn is and there's 10 turns in the game by the way is we will resolve the event well guess what there is no event first turn so then you reveal the event that will resolve next turn which in this case is nothing happens but it could be something like each player picks a structure from their left hand types road and they can lose that upgrade or destroy it during the next day phase, players must spend a crystal to go to the market, etc. So that you know what the event is a whole turn ahead of time. Then the bad guys move. This is during the night phase. And by the way, we keep track of all these phases here. See, event, night phase, and so on and so forth. So the bad guys move. And if any bad guys are on the track, they're going to move equal to the number on them. So this guy's a two, he would move two. The spider would move three. If nobody... Uh, and then after you move everyone, then the top two come off and move, like this. You'll notice they have two different sides. Once they've been wounded, you'll flip them to their side. If they're hit when they're wounded, they are gone. Then your towers will go off. So as the game goes by, you're going to want to build towers. And these towers will fit in different spots. And each tower hits all the adjacent things next to it. So if I had a tower here, it would only hit these two. So this would do one damage to him and one damage to him. So if he next turn, he's going to move two. Nothing's going to happen. He'll move two. And then this tower would hit him again and kill him. When you kill someone, you will get a crystal. This is like the currency of the game. Uh, and sometimes other things will happen. So, for example, when you hit an orc, they will blow up the tower that hit them. So players are trying to set these towers up to hit these people. And then the day phase will happen where each person has different actions. So you can build a new tower for two. You pick one of the three colors. The colors matter because each color can only hit the creatures of that type. So if I want to hit these goblins, I'm going to need to use a red tower. Uh, you can also upgrade towers, but upgrading towers will have to be done by a card. But when a tower is upgraded, it gives it a special ability. For example, the red upgrade hits all the enemies next to it. The blue upgrade can protect nearby towers. The yellow upgrade can slow creatures down. You can extend your road. That's what this special ability is. That costs two. You'll draw three tiles, and you have to say, okay, I'm going to extend from here. All right. Now I'm going to extend this direction, and you draw the next one. Well, I have to actually make it go down because I can't make a loop. So then I'm going to extend here, and it goes straight down, and then you put your castle at the end. That makes it farther and also allows you to put towers in different positions to hit more people. It is possible that you accidentally build a shortcut when building the road, so you have to be careful not to make it faster for the bad guys to get to your castle. You can also draw cards. There's a deck of cards here, and there's face-up cards. When you take cards, you're going to be able to play cards uh, after most of the actions allow you to play a card. So a lot of the cards have things. Like this guy lets you spend two crystals to upgrade a tower. This is how you upgrade towers, by playing cards. Or just take two crystals. This guy here, who costs an extra crystal to take him, lets you move each monster in your row back one space, flip a monster of your choice to its healthy side. You would do that to someone else, of course. Or destroy a structure from another player. Send a monster from your road to any other road, or gain two. 
and there's all kinds of different cards that are in your set. Upgrade a tower free or destroy a structure. Spend one crystal, upgrade one of your towers. Free a monster from any city, which means the monster gets out, etc. Now eventually, as the turns go by, the boss monster is going to come out. He does not die after a couple hits. And instead, you will be hitting him on this main center board. And as you hit him, just uh, doing the different wounds that you get to him, which are going to become points at the end of the game. At wound three, three flips over. And he will just keep coming down and down towards your castle. See, anytime anyone hits your tower, they will do that many much damage to you. And you're keeping track of your damage on your character sheet here. Um, the boss monster will hit you, and then he recycles, and he'll come again, and he'll just keep marching and marching. But he also can be hit by any color tower. The game ends when someone dies. You know, they lose all their health because monsters hit them too much. Or if someone kills the main boss, or at the end of 10 turns. You'll add up the points you got from killing this boss. You'll get points for the different monsters that you've killed along the way. And you'll add your remaining population of your city, and whoever has the highest score is the winner of the game. All right, the game has these really nice towers. They're really cool. I almost wish you could like double color the towers like this, but uh, it's still it's neat to be able to. You have these towers and upgrading them looks really good. These towers are like a nice soft rubbery plastic, which is great. The boards themselves, the different types of terrain are very distinct and different. And as you put the paths together, it looks really great as the board goes down. They even have like a special ooh, magical road. Looks like it's from Mario. Uh, that you'll be able to place with some cards. The artwork on the cards is fine. You know, it's that typical artwork that you're seeing in pretty much every board game these days. But it looks good. Well, let's try that again. There we go. So it looks pretty good. The card quality is decent. Not great, but it's decent. And then you got the crystals and the creatures and everything. Overall, the production for this game is really quite nice. Okay, so this game has some really nice uh, components, right? And the building of the board and setting up the things is really cool because you're sitting there thinking, okay, the spider's going to go three, so I'll put a tower there, then he'll go three again. I have this tower here. So each time a spider comes out, boom, I'm going to nail him all the way through. And I'm setting these blue towers up here and the red towers, and when the boss comes out, there's a lot of cool thinky bits to that, when to buy cards and upgrade, and how to prepare for these events that are going to show up, and just that again, the motif and how well the game looks. This is good, and I would give this game a Dice Tower approved, but I can't, and that's because of the take that. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't know that I'm against the idea of going after other players, but in this game, it's just so powerful and random. To move a creature from my board to your board, sure, you might get some more points, but I'm going to set it up in a way that you probably won't and that it's going to hurt you badly. To destroy one of your structures is extremely powerful and just mean. And then there's cards like the event card where everyone destroys a tower next to them. And what happens in this game is this game is just basically do what you can and then hurt somebody else. When I played one game of this, I made somebody lose. Period. And it wasn't because I was a better player than that person. I like to think so, right? But I made them lose because I played a card that basically said this round, they couldn't move monsters or kill monsters. And it was the last round of the game, and so they didn't get any extra points for killing monsters. And uh, I pulled ahead of them in points and won the game. I made them lose by the play of a single card. You can say, that's clever. No, I just happened to get that card. Had they gotten the card and played it on me, I would have lost. Now, I get that if there wasn't any of this take that in the game, the game would be very rote. The game would be very simple. You would set up your little formula, watch the guys come in and take them out. But I'm not opposed to that, right? I don't know that there had to be this wild take that game. So many of these cards are just negative to your opponent. Here, uh, let me go through here. Destroy a structure. Free a monster. Someone's monster comes back out and fights again. Um, take two crystals from an opponent. Swap one of your towers with a tower from your opponent. Choose a player. They lose one extra guard when each time their city is invaded by a monster. Not to mention these cards are wildly imbalanced too. This one gives me three crystals. This one gives me one. This one lets me build a tower for free. This lets me build a tower for one. Huh? That's just kind of wild and all over the place. And that actually affects my enjoyment of this game. The game is cool. It looks neat. Build these towers. Here comes the monsters. Blow them apart. But when you add this, take that in, it just becomes a wild, crazy mess. 
People can decide who's going to win or lose by attacking that person. And it does, uh, like I said, the event cards will often help you hurt other people. And that doesn't even actually fit in the motif. When I play a tower defense game, I'm not saying, oh, are you playing a tower defense game too? Hang on a second, let me pause my game and come over and I'm going to punch you while you're playing the game. Or make more enemies show up on your board. Nah, I don't know. So, it's not a bad experience. I have a lot of fun doing it. It's just at the end of the day, I sit there and go, eh, it's just too random for me to really have enjoyed it that much. Which is a shame because great artwork, great components, cool theme, and the theme fits. Except for that crazy random take that. That may not affect you. You may think that's fun, and if that's the case, you're really going to like this game because then there's no downsides in it for you. But for me, that's a huge downside. Again, I have no problem attacking other players, but in this game, it seems indiscriminate, it seems mean-spirited, and it just doesn't seem very strategic. It just hurts somebody else because we feel like it. And that's not the Age of Towers. The Age of Towers is defense, not hurting other players. Dice Tower Judgment, too random and take thatty.